Hello, this is Randy England. I want to share with you some thoughts about managing stakeholder expectations. This is a hot topic that came out of participant seminar in my seminar who were asked about another topic that they would really like to see covered. Some of the challenges that we're facing is that organizations experience a lot of bad things with their budgets or failures, schedules, and uh, a lot of dissatisfied customers. And why? Because a lot of the leaders do not ex pay attention to people's needs. And some stakeholders are going to not voice their expectations very well, or maybe they're unclear and very ambiguous about what they want. And if we have a people who are taking refuge in being able to go along with political correctness, then they may not be real clear in expressing their, their expectation. And then if we're just reactive instead of having some strategy, it's not going to be very careful. So here's some definitions. Stakeholder, or various people, it's anybody who has a stake in the ground who's going to be uh, impacted by the project. And the identification process of stakeholders is being able to have a process so that you identify all the people in the organization who might have an impact on project success. And uh, where do we identify our stakeholders? Well, get help from a lot of people. Here's some um, people all the way from senior management to other networking opportunities or team members where you can get some input about who are the people who are very important to your project. You can look at some eyes all, all the way from your where to find your stakeholders. You can look at the project charter statement that hopefully every project has. You can look at your organizational chart, but although a lot of the charts don't really indicate who has the real power, or you can look to historical information, and that could be some very helpful ways to be able to identify who are the people who make an impact on projects in an organization. You can also manage your project compass. In this compass, you can look to the north or the south or east or the west and be able to keep identifying who else do I need to include and refer back to these points when completing the stakeholder register, which I'll share a sample with you in a moment. You can also look at how do we assess who are the people that we can deal with. And you can see in the middle, we have some control. Well, control is an illusion, really. But the people closest to the team are the ones that we can know the best and work with. But we also have to be able to influence other people in a large organizational context or in the largest picture, we, the rest of the organization, the environment in which you're working, it, uh, a lot of things could be beyond our control, and you need to just be able to appreciate that these things will impact the probability of success from a project. So doing a stakeholder analysis, after we identify who they are, we need to kind of focus on analysis, understand their interests, their expectations, and appreciate the power and influence that they have. We can look at various salience models that can uh, really describe various classes, and I'll share some examples of those. And uh, time spent doing this is very well spent. It's going to avoid a lot of catastrophes and failures down the line. So in terms of analyzing our stakeholders, look at their interests. They really come down to what's in it for them. It also may be that there's a sponsoring organization has interest in probability was a public or government organization might just want to know what impact it will have on the public. Expectations. Some of the expectations, uh, what do the project expect or assume for your project? And uh, knowing that will help anticipate what you need to do down the line. And here's the biggie. Unknown or unexpressed expectations can really ruin your project. Very few things I can guarantee, but this is probably one of them that's going to come true. Look at power and influence. Be sensitive, not just a shark or naive, but be sensitive to the power and influence that each stakeholder has within your project. They come from various ways, their, their ability to control resources, funding, and so forth. And pay attention to all the clues that are around you. People say it through their language, uh, through their questions, and and really their actions. Ask the question, who could stop this project? And that's a way that you can really get a good sense of being able to say, well, I better be careful there. So 
guidelines to remember to identify their interests, prioritize the values and, in, and issues, look for what uh, competing or conflicts, uh, potential conflicts that might come or allies that, that might be willing to work with you. You want to be able to alert yourself to the need for conflict resolution because that's going to be there as well and need to be masterful in working through the conflict. Design a process that aligns stakeholders so that you really contact all the people and you follow through. And what you're trying to do is optimize both your time and theirs. Here's a way motivation is often different from expectations, but you want to identify what people need, create the drive for them, uh, select uh, all selective behavior that's conducive to your project. They perform the task, they get feedback, and then hopefully you can reassess. And the whole point here, all this is inner motivation. A lot of external motivation has limited impact as much as internal does. So seek clues, ask questions. Here's a sample stakeholder register. In this one, we're, we're taking a couple examples. We can see their power and influence. We can put weighting to each one of these. And then we can start putting a matrix together of both what their interests, the assessment, and what action steps I might take. And from there, you can really go uh, develop a bubble chart. And we kind of put the support resistance as a bigger bubble. So when you get the biggest bubbles, then those are ones that you really have, to, have to realize that we need to pay attention to these people. You might also want to look at their trust and the agreement on the project and, and put your various stakeholders in areas like this. This could either be an individual exercise or a team exercise. And it probably gets better with the team, but be aware of any sensitivities that people might have of how people become characterized. Okay. Managing stakeholder expectations. In communicating and working with people, you want to be able to look at some of the communication processes. Have a communications plan. Regular meetings. Use all the social media and newsletters and so forth where you can track issues and administer change control in a very clear way so it doesn't negatively impact a project. Your interpersonal skills are going to include trust, building the trust. You can't just build trust yourself. You do it by being trustworthy. You follow through on your commitment. You do what you said you're going to do. People can count on you. And uh, you resolve conflicts. You listen, vo vocalize your own expectations for people to make sure that they are in congruence with what they are and negotiate. All of this is going to take lots of negotiation. If you haven't developed that skill, I highly recommend read the books, take a course, and um, practice negotiation because it's a career enhancing skill for the lifetime. Management skills. Train and develop stakeholders. Manage up the organization if that's what it takes to develop uh, better sponsors. You want to implement these practices and you're visible through your presentations, your discussions, and, and the reports and you're fair and consistent. People know they can count on you. But also you need to validate. Realize that do not do not assume that your first pass is correct or accurate or feasible. So document your assumptions, check them out, ask questions, look for evidence, be careful of generalizations and stereotypes. They may be helpful as a baseline, but you also need to be able to modify based upon your own observations. Review a management plan with others to see if they can help you improve it and update it as changes occur. Have fun getting to know all of your key stakeholders. It should be. It starts with making right decisions, managing those decisions. Nothing will make a better impression on others than how you can manage yourself. Place a priority in understanding and listening to people. That's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. You are going to be an example for others to follow, a role model, and your positive attitude is going to speak wonders. You also have to beware of the ladder of influences. Okay, this is a from the point of raw data raw observations, and then then we select data and we we add meanings and we make assumptions, and conclusions. That's where our beliefs about the world or people come as we've climbed this ladder before we take actions. And the thing is, uh, I might be climbing the ladder in one direction, making some assumptions and conclusions, and somebody else is climbing a ladder, but do they do it the same way as I do? No. So we need to be aware 
of our own thinking and make it more visible to other people. And as it becomes visible, then you can inquire to other people's thinking and reasoning. And one of the things that I often do is open the, ask a question such as, well, when it, you know, it seemed like an outrageous assertion. What in your experience has led you to make that conclusion? And I might learn something or might find out they're, they're totally wrong. Okay. You want to balance advocacy questions with inquiry questions. Inquire where you really are, are trying to get them to share with you what's important to them. There's a lot of patterns that happen in organizations. The focus on relationships, knowing that people respond to energy and enthusiasm. Your questions want to engage others and make them feel like they're contributing to what your endeavor is. Use compelling evidence and vivid language that you have a, a strong vision statement that gets people excited that they know why you're doing it and they believe in the goal. You create an org organic or ecosystem where people feel like they're working in a place that is very pleasant, very easy for them to work in. It's a way they want to work, the preferred operating conditions. Get explicit commitments from people because that's a way that you can truly help uh, make sure that uh, if they don't follow through, that you can call them on it. And focus on trust, authenticity, and integrity. Value. People do things that have value to them. And the point is, you want to close the gap between inside of what they might value, but what really, where is it adding value? What, what activity is adding value? And the question you want to ask is how do you get people to choose to work with you where it's valuable to them and valuable to you and support the common goal? That's what you're trying to get to. So the implementation of all that, use open-ended questions to try to get people to contribute. Create and test prototypes. A lot of times people don't believe or see something until they literally see it. So your prototype can know if you're on the right track or if you make, need to make changes. Ask what if questions. That's a key skill during negotiations. These are what if type questions. What if I could do a subset of that in the time frame and do the rest later? You're not making a commitment, but you get to test the reactions. Test the assumptions, both theirs and your own. And stay tuned to changes because they're going to happen. And this is important that you are authentic, you act with integrity, and, and you practice accountability. You ask people to be responsible or make explicit commitment to the success of the project, the team, the organization. Authentic means you say what you believe. Integrity means you do what you say you're going to do. Those violate any of those, and your effectiveness as a leader goes way down. Meeting the challenge. Tune into the essence both of yourself and others. What's, what's most important to them? Pay attention to those clues because they are all around you. You want to build trust and you want to be viewed as competent. You demonstrate that and you work for the greater good. You're transparent. And get extraordinary results. And especially put fun on the agenda. Here's a final statement of trying to say. Artificial intelligence is a big thing, but unless they can do all of these things to capture, it really remains for us to try to do them if we want to be consistently achieving success. This is my information. These are the books I've written that we're trying to build that sweet spot, the green space where environment and sponsors all work together and make things be very successful. Thank you for paying attention to my insights or words and best wishes on all your projects.